I'd like to talk now about the different types of disinfectants that we've seen out in the field. The first class of disinfectants that have been known since antiquity has been acids and alkalis. So when we talk about acids, we're talking about phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid. When we talk about alkalis, we're talking about calcium or sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, or quicklime, which is really calcium oxide. These disinfectants have a modest broad spectrum in activity. They're good against non-envelope viruses, envelope viruses, and vegetative bacteria. So the main problem with using acids or alkalis as disinfectants is their corrosivity. Because they deliver extreme pH, either very low or very high, they're highly corrosive to skin, to eyes, and of course to materials. So another important class of disinfectants are aldehydes, namely formaldehyde and glueraldehyde. These are cross-linking agents, meaning that they denature proteins and soils and fixate them to surfaces. In fact, aldehydes are used as fixating agents in microscopy. Why is this relevant? It's relevant because if we don't perform the cleaning process properly, there will be soils available on the surfaces to be cross-linked by the disinfectant aldehyde, which means that now you have a soil adhered to a surface that will be very difficult to remove in subsequent cleaning steps. Formaldehyde, although not used so much in North America, is actually a carcinogen. Glutaraldehyde is formally recognized as a respiratory sensitizer, meaning that continual exposure to glutaraldehyde increases the chance of people developing asthma. The nature of glutaraldehyde as a respiratory sensitizer has been documented extensively in the literature, to the point where in the human health field, the use of glutaraldehyde, which used to be the workhorse chemical for endoscope and instrument disinfection, has dropped dramatically. In fact, some countries, like in the UK, it has been banned for that use. And consider that the use of glutaraldehyde in that application has been as a cold soak, not as a dispersed product through a power washer. Resistance development of microorganisms to aldehydes has also been extensively documented in the human health field. Aldehydes are very difficult to validate concentration in a prepared solution. Aldehydes are persistent in the environment. They're very difficult to degrade. Finally, it's very common to find glutaraldehyde formulated with quaternary ammonium compounds. The reason for that lies in the toxicity profile of the glutaraldehyde keeping the concentration of glutaraldehyde load in the final disinfection product requires that we formulate a quaternary ammonium compound into it so that the efficacy is there in the end. So an important class of disinfectant actives are quaternary ammonium compounds, or quats. So quats have a relatively limited spectrum of activity. It is well known that they have a deficiency against gram negatives, but also against non-envelope viruses. They're easily inactivated by soils and by anionic detergents. They are prone to the development of resistance, especially by vegetative bacteria. The development of resistance of bacteria to quaternary ammonium compounds has been extensively documented in the literature. They are persistent in the environment, so they have a very poor biodegradability profile. They don't clean very well. They have poor detergency, and the reason is, is because of their positive charge. Most environmental surfaces have a negative charge, and so quaternary ammonium compounds tend to absorb strongly to surfaces as opposed to absorb to soils and suspend them for removal. And finally, quaternary ammonium compounds are skin, eye, and respiratory tract irritants. I mentioned before how when formulating with glutaraldehyde, the formulator will typically try to maintain a low level of glutaraldehyde because of the toxicity. And on the other hand, we mentioned that one of the deficiencies of quads was their activity gaps against gram negatives and non-envelope viruses. And so the practical solution to this has been to formulate both compounds together in a single disinfectant product. This allows a lower concentration of glutaraldehyde in an attempt to limit the toxicity and also addresses the gaps that the quaternary ammonium compound, the quad, naturally has. And here's an example of a commercial product doing that. However, the fact still remains that glutaraldehyde is a respiratory sensitizer and that the formulation itself has some inherent underlying weaknesses concerning gram-negatives and concerning non-envelope viruses.